Have you ever wondered if Gege Akatami is truly a genius or if he is literally leading us on a wild goose chase? Well, I think I have the answer. Sometimes you gotta close the door to open a window. Jujutsu Kaisen has got many, many mysteries. Sukuna's origins, the Heian era, where is the rest of the Gojo clan? What is Tengen's connection to Kenjaku and Sukuna? What happened to Nobara? The list literally goes on and on and on. And one mystery that keeps coming up quite frequently is souls. And I believe the souls aspect is connected to Nobara, possibly. Now, more than ever, souls are at the forefront of this story as Yuji is currently fighting to rescue Megami's soul from the clutches of Sukuna. But Mahito was our first introduction to this concept of souls here, so come with me. I'm going to take you on a little journey here that shows you everything to do with souls within Jujutsu Kaisen, how it's connected, and how I think it will more than likely bring Nobara back and tie together all the pieces of information with a helpful mind map that I made. First off, we'll start with Mahito. Mahito was the first real antagonist that we got in terms of Jujutsu Kaisen. You see, Mahito's curse technique, it was idol transfiguration, a curse technique that allowed him to not only manipulate the soul of himself, but the souls of others. However, meeting Yuji Itadori and Nobara Kugisaki, Mahito found his perfect match, someone whose soul he couldn't manipulate and someone who could harm his own soul. Yuji being due to the fact that he housed the entity and force of nature known as Sukuna Ryuman, and Yuji's time with Sukuna allowed him to be able to attack the soul's boundary and perceive the outline of his own soul, and likewise Sukuna was also able to do the same thing. But Sukuna could also do more, so much more. Sukuna's knowledge on souls allowed him to split his soul between 20 fingers and transcend death, and was also able to do it a second time to forcibly take over Megami's body. Now, coincidentally, Sukuna is the only person in this series we've ever been shown in his innate domain, and we've had it outright confirmed that this was an innate domain. We see Yuji enter this domain upon his death, and we also see Mahito enter it a couple of times. We never ever see or hear an actual confirmation of anyone else having an innate domain outside of this fact. Now, Sukuna was also able to know that Yuji was striking directly at the boundary of his and Megami's soul, disrupting their balance, but Sukuna wasn't born with this knowledge, he had to learn it. So, he was taught certain things from a certain man, Kenjaku. Kenjaku taught Sukuna how to split his soul into cursed objects, and Kenjaku is also the only person in this series shown to have entered the cursed realm. Whether that has anything to do with souls remains to be seen, we don't know. But additionally, Kenjaku seemed to be able to find the wandering soul of Sukuna's twin brother, which we later now know was Jin Itadori. And he's also responsible for dropping this piece of information. The body is the soul, and the soul is the body. And this information is confirmed in the most unsuspecting way by none other than Yaga Masamichi. And as we know, Yaga is responsible for the creation of Panda, a cursed corpse. Upon his conversation with Gaku Ganji, Yaga reveals that you can create cursed corpse by replicating the soul's information from the physical information, indirectly confirming what Kenjaku said, the body is the soul, and the soul is the body. But Yaga was also responsible for the cursed corpse creation of Kusakabe's dead nephew, confirmed by these panels in chapter 147, alongside another nugget of information that we've all seemed to have overlooked. This created nephew, the case corpse of this nephew, was sheltered in a forest that was protected by none other than Master Tengen. And Tengen, as we know, is essentially a kind of a god within Jujutsu Kaisen here. With the case technique of immortality, it requires him to reset every 500 years with an individual known as the Star Plasma Vessel. And so far in the series, we've only met two Star Plasma Vessels, one being Yuki Sukumo, who should have merged with Tengen. And Yuki spent her entire life researching souls and even confirmed that she could hear the voices of the former Star Plasma Vessel souls residing within Tengen. And the other Star Plasma Vessel is Riko Amanai. Now, this was someone who was meant to have merged with Tengen but decided to not to until a certain man intervened, ending her life. Toji Zeno. Toji should be an isolated instance here, but he is a man who is said to have broken the chains of destiny or fate, and Toji isn't without his own ties to souls within Jujutsu Kaisen here. See, his body was able to overpower the soul of Granny Ogani's grandson, furthermore proven what Kenjaku stated. The body is the soul, and the soul is the body. Now, Granny Ogami wasn't aware of this information, stating that she was careful to never summon the soul's information. 
And Toji isn't alone in his little run-ins with the soul here because Maki Zenon and Mai Zenon have also had their own little run-ins with the soul. They both shared a conversation what seems to be some sort of soul world. And why do I think it's some sort of soul world? Well, this is a bit speculative and theory crafting from me, but this panel right here depicts water bubbling up to the surface. It has been shown also when Megami's soul was submerged completely after the bath, and we also see a similar underwater setting when Yuji enters his soul and again when Gojo recognizes that Megami's soul was being attacked by Sukuna. And on top of this, Maki is also able to perceive the soul, something that's confirmed within this panel right here in chapter 252. So by extension, Toji Zenon would have also been able to do the exact same thing given that they are equals. Speaking of Megami, here, his soul was submerged within something that's known as the bath, a ritual that was prepared by Sukuna's number one fan. And also, I'd be your number one if you liked and subscribed. That would really help a brother out right here. They prepared this bath, stating its purpose was to bring Megami's soul closer to evil, so that his sense of self, or rather his soul, sinks much, much deeper. And we get a somewhat visual representation of this when Gojo is fighting Sukuna. Gojo is figuring out what Sukuna is doing with the adaptation, and we are shown two bright spots in the body of Sukuna. One smaller one and lower, and the other is larger and much higher, signifying the submerged soul of Megami. At least that's what I think anyway. As Gojo sees this, he arrives at the conclusion that Megami's soul was the one that was used to shoulder the damage of adaptation. And this isn't the first time Gojo had interactions with the soul here. As in Shibuya, we see him calling out to Ghetto, and Ghetto responds trying to choke Kenjaku. And as we know, if the body is the soul, and the soul is the body. We also know that at the time of Gojo fighting Sukuna, Gojo will have more than likely read Yuki's Book of Souls, just like everyone else has, in order to form a plan to rescue Megami here. But Gojo isn't the only one who had a plan for rescuing Megami's soul. Yuta Okotsu also had a plan in mind, Yuta being a distant, distant relative of Gojo Satoru. And Yuta is someone who managed to detain the soul of someone he loved, being Rika Orimoto, and him doing so ended up granting him a vast amount of power here. And conveniently, right now in the story, Yuta is doing somewhat of the same thing here, detaining the soul and body of Gojo Satoru, a loved one, in order to fight against Sukuna, truly showing off the power of love here. Because again, if he's detaining Gojo's body, he's also detaining the soul. To add into all of this, there are two plot points here that involve the soul and are yet to be tied up by Gege right now. Number one being what Gaku Ganji intends to do with the information of the chaos corpses that he shared with Gojo. Gaku Ganji now knows the secret of Panda and his creation and how Masamichi made Panda and how to create said chaos corpses. And two, what is the fate of a certain Nobara Kugisaki, a sorcerer within the series who, just like Yuji Itadori, was the natural enemy of Mahito with his soul resonance? And if I had to place serious bets on Nobara coming back as a KS corpse, I would bet my life she does so with the help of Wee Wee, who can swap souls between bodies with him swapping her into the body of a KS corpse created with the help of Gaku Ganji or maybe even Panda, and alongside the information left behind by Yuki Tsukumo, I truly, truly believe that this is the last and only hope for Nibara Kugisaki to return this way. Because considering her body was left in a somewhat frozen state, her damage wasn't uh, progressing, but she didn't have a pulse, she was left in sort of limbo, and I think Gege has done this intentionally to leave her return up until the 11th hour. And right now, with everything that's going on within the series, with souls, and how close we are to sort of tying everything up, I genuinely believe that this would be the most likely solution when you truly lay everything out on the table and everything is all truly connected within the soul mind map that I've created here. It is the only thing yet left to be tied up was those two points, the Chaos Corpses and Nobara's Return. Anyway, that is enough of the rabbit hole from me. I hope you enjoyed. If you not already, be sure to like and subscribe and let me know what you think of the video down below. Also, if you're extremely curious, I left a link for this same mind map in the description for you to go and feast your eyeballs on. Um, there's lots of notes in there about all sorts of different things and you can truly see just how connected Gege has been with all of this soul stuff. It really is genuinely all connected. And this is just one aspect of the story, by the way. This is just souls. This doesn't even include everything else that is going on within the story, all of these plot points. This is just souls here. But anyway, yeah. As always, make sure to go drink some fucking water, go tell someone you fucking love them, and as always, I will catch you guys all in the next one.
Much fucking love. Big fucking kisses. Peace.